as long as I can remember, I mean, I think he was talking about doing Quixote. He believes in Quixote. It's Terry's sort of film, and it mixes all his humour and his fun and his joy and his darkness. It's the best sort of Terry Gilliam. Every film that Terry makes, Terry somehow manifests himself as the characters. And yeah, Quixote, there he is, a man charging against windmills. This has been bugging me for a long time, and Quixote has been you know, dogging me. The first time we started this, trying to get Quixote on the page was around 91. I've been you know, fantasizing this for a very long time. And it's, you know, I've made the film in my head. I, the pictures are there. The, the, yeah, it's been played out many, many times. The Quixote is, 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 I think, has obsessed me for years because all of my stuff has been about reality, fantasy, madness, sanity, and Quixote encompasses all of those. Exterior Spanish hilltop day. In black and white, an ancient stone wheel mill. <laughs> Okay, cut it. See what I mean? <laughs> I think the point has been made Back to the top. It's always back to the top. On the first scene. Oh, Terry, oh, Tony. Okay, you guys ready? Okay, we're we going back. Yeah. From okay. the top. I'm gonna go ahead and roll now. Scene one, take two. Exterior Spanish hilltop day. An ancient stone windmill spins slowly in the breeze. Don Quixote appears, gaunt, aged, a madly fierce gleam in his eyes. Stand your ground, foul and fearsome giant! I am Don Quixote de la Mancha! Next to him is his fat partner, Sancho Panza. It's just a windmill! Stand aside, Sancho! Don Quixote lowers his lance and charges the windmill. The lance impales the sail and Don Quixote is wrenched from Rosinante and spins high in the air, hooked on the revolving sail. She's like out that way. Terry Gilliam, the maverick director behind such films as Brazil, The Fisher King, and Twelve Monkeys, has been trying to mount a film production of Don Quixote for more than a decade. There's it's interesting down the there. So the military map, there's loads of uh, old windmills like. Yeah, that well, let's go. There. I mean, if we can get in there, that'll be interesting to see. After several false starts and financial mishaps with the project, Gilliam has finally arrived in Spain to begin production. Don Quixote seems to be at the back of Terry's work and seems to have been at the back of Terry's work for a long time. In the broadest sense, it's a, he's a, a hero that would appeal to Terry um, because the notion of, of someone uh, gleefully battling in the face of all odds and logic and reality is one uh, that appeals to him. What happens in Cervantes' Don Quixote is that you meet a man, an old man, a man who surrounds himself with romantic novels, tales of the deeds of great knights. He then decides that he will go forth and actually live out these romantic tales himself. And so he puts together a suit of armor out of bits and pieces he finds around the house. The famous helmet is a, a shaving basin with a piece cut out for the neck. He saddles his horse, Rosinante, who is an old nag, has fallen to pieces. All he's missing is his faithful squire. And Sancho Panza is a short, fat guy with a donkey, a peasant. So they set off and they start to look for um, daring deeds to do. Quixote is so deluded that uh, where other people see a windmill, he sees a giant. Where other people see a windmill sails, he sees the flailing arms of this giant. Quixote's delusions are a major part of his appeal for us. We want to uh, see the world through Quixote's eyes. 
because the way he sees the world, I think, connects with the way that we saw the world as children, a world where objects did have a magical significance. Gilliam has fought many battles to bring his vision of Quixote to the screen. After several unsuccessful attempts to develop the project in Hollywood, he decided to produce the film in Europe. Quixote will be among the most expensive films ever produced solely with European funds. Ladies and gentlemen, we just uh, we basically just called this meeting. Um, because we haven't had a sort of open forum at any stage up till now. We're missing a few people, of course. But this is, you represent the main bodies of the film that are under work at the moment. This is the first time that we have Signor Gilliam in Spain, and he's here to stay. So there's no excuses for any of us now. If we have any question, if we have any doubt, or there's something that we want to know, this is the place to come to. I've said this to a few different people. I don't know if I've said it to everybody, but I do think it's going to be great. I think everybody's got a good sense of humor. Everybody's you know, smart. Everybody's good at their job. And you, with any luck, will protect me from making an utter fool of myself. <laughs> <laughs> One thing to say is that, you know, I'll keep demanding all sorts of things, and you've got to scream earlier than later, say, no, can't, can't do it. Because, I mean, we all know we're working on a budget that's way below what we would normally need to make a film like this. We got to do it for what we got and, uh, and find ways of doing it. Basically, let's get on with it. He's here now, he's a resource, let's use him, let's drain him. He knows the film, he's been with it for uh, two years? No, let's oh, give it 10, oh. let's do the whole decade. Oh, let's call it 10 years. Yeah. He's been at it for 10 years, so he should know what he's doing. Gilliam is not the first filmmaker to have struggled to bring Quixote to the screen. In 1957, Orson Welles began production on his own adaptation of Don Quixote. The project would become Welles' creative obsession for the next two decades. In a village in La Mancha, whose name I prefer not to recall. Welles took on various acting and directing projects to help finance the film and would gather bits and pieces of footage whenever he could, even after the project outlived Francisco Rigera, Welles' Quixote. But by the time of Wells' death in 1985, Quixote remained incomplete. The struggle to launch Quixote began just a year ago when Gilliam actually started pre-production on the film, only to have a major financier back out at the last minute. In order to get the film going this time, Gilliam and his producer have had to scale back the budget from 40 to 32 million dollars. For me, it was the film the most difficult to mount financially that I've ever had, and yet I've had a lot of big films to mount financially. I think it's par rapport au coût du projet, au, à la difficulté du scénario. Euh, voilà, c'est un, un, un film très cher pour euh, les épaules européennes. Le budget de ce truc est de 32,1 millions de dollars, qui, par les standards européens, sans l'investissement américain, est un grand chunk de change. Pour ce que nous essayons de faire, c'est half the money que nous avons in Gilliam's adaptation, he has taken the fantastic story of Don Quixote and embellished it with another layer of fantasy. He's created the story of Toby Grossini, a modern-day advertising executive who travels back into the 17th century, where Quixote mistakes him for Sancho Panza. Johnny Depp stars as Toby. Vanessa Paradis plays Toby's love interest, Altisidora and the veteran French actor Jean Rochefort plays Don Quixote. 
The script is as ambitious as anything Gilliam has ever attempted. Stand your ground, foul and fearsome giant. I am Don Quixote de la Mancha. It's not a giant, it's a willy. I am Don Quixote de la Mancha. It's not a giant, it's a windmill. More intense, it's, it's not, no, it's not a giant. No, please, no, 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 no. It's not a giant, it's a windmill. Je suis sûr que les moments qu'on voit les moulins, for example, we can put the camera on. I must say, there are very few scenes that are simple. Terry, as we all well know, has the tendency of overloading everything. I mean, there is nothing ever simple and plain. No, I mean, and they, they'll be on things so they can walk down. Yes, yes. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I mean, that's what, yeah, that's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, I know. So he ends up like a kid holding yeah. on to... We rig this thing so the camera can do right. that. Because looking down will be amazing. Basically, Terry trying to make a Hollywood movie without Hollywood, which is almost impossible. The difficulty is making a film the best possible way with the best, uh, with the money we have. I think this is the better face. Faccia, it's my hook. You need to cut <laughs> your mind. They're cagliarli li dei, cut it dei dei. Now, sheep can go in here very nicely. They come around that curve, tons of sheep. <laughs> this will be very tumultuous. This film will not be easy. Making a film with Terry is like riding a bareback pony. Just grab onto the mane, dig in the heels and the knees and hang on, because you're in for the ride of your life. in thunder. What's that? Don't look. Don't go to twist round to the saddle. Something's coming. There's nothing there. Please don't look. Giant shadows rise across Toby. He turns. He looks back. Three giants loom up over the brow of the hill. In their hands are great cudgels. One plays castanets. Me llamo Raúl. Fantastic. And the third, well, the third is just, yeah, yeah. the third is fantastic. <laughs> the third. Is... Yeah. Raúl, un, un poquito de striptease. Que os vean a los dos quiere decir que no te pongas tú detrás de, de Fernando porque no sirve, ¿eh? Cara de miedo hacia aquí. Come to me. Aquí, aquí, aquí. Cara de miedo. Okay. Gracias. You got to see the giants. Uh, what is terrifying, what is extraordinary about it, it's suddenly you're seeing what Coyote sees, and it's like nothing you've seen in the film. It's like, whoa! Elsa Sidora and Toby charge down a corridor. She wheels her horse. They set off down a dark tunnel. Sounds echo behind them. They're pursuers. They merge into an utterly dark space. Elsa Sidora reigns in her horse. What's wrong? I thought this was the way, but... Stop! They turn and are confronted by Don Quixote. Traitor! Judas! As Don Quixote moves forward, we see he is a giant puppet. Toby and Elsa Sidora are suddenly surrounded by a dozen armored guards. The guards are puppets, too. Oh, no! When this thing splits apart, and Toby has got to have his arm getting caught in there. There's no way that'll get his arm caught when it comes back together. Absolutely 
Oh, he's all open. Yes, this is like a whole key bit for the whole thing to come. Just chop it and pull it, push it, make it thinner. Yeah, we could So, did he get his arm in there? So, really, that is. No, no. We have to touch the molds then. I know you have to touch the molds. <laughs> That's what I'm assuming, yeah. yeah unless, unless you. No, I'm yeah. just thinking about the time again. I understand, I know, I know. Yes. I like taking on very complex and difficult challenges. If it's easy, I don't do it. If it's almost impossible to do, I have a go at it. It seems it's what gets my adrenaline going. It, it, maybe it's what fires my, what creativity I have. It, if without a battle, maybe I don't know exactly how to approach it. The action is very simple. Yeah. The action is simple, except that there's horses. So the action with the horses is complicated, but with the puppets, it's very simple. Toby's got to lash out of the puppet, it's got to go in the air, he gets tangled and whoop, off his horse. I can, I can do all that, uh, all that rigging, yeah. in the studio, and I paint black the, the, the floor. No, no, but you still have to do the wooden floor like that. I have to cut part of the... No, no, the, no, no, the, no, no, the, no, no, don't have it. Why is it so difficult to have that yeah, each of those structures is on a plate. Es su visión, o sea, que hay muchas cosas que él tiene tan metidas en su retina que naturalmente el reto principal es tratar de visualizar la historia a través de sus ojos, ¿no? Pero yo creo que él es un poco el Quijote. Él es el, el, el soñador, el idealista, el que el que ve cosas que los demás humanos no vemos. Terry Gilliam has a history of hugely ambitious projects, visually rich films that explore the fantasy worlds of his protagonists, all of them dreamers like himself. But turning his dreams into reality has not been an easy thing for Gilliam in the Hollywood studio system. The set with visions too elaborate for low budget financing, but often too eccentric for Hollywood taste, all his productions have been a battle. His wild visions are always accomplished on limited budgets and have consistently met with both critical and box office success. The adventures of Baron Munchausen was a painful exception. Teamed with a producer who spun tales of extravagant resources that didn't exist, Gilliam found himself at the reins of a production that was already $10 million over budget by the end of its sixth week. Despite Gilliam's repeated efforts to scale back complex scenes, the budget more than doubled by the completion of filming. Munchausen became one of the textbook cases of a film fiasco, and Gilliam acquired a reputation as a director out of control. <laughs> that reputation has often made it extremely difficult for Gilliam to launch his own projects. There was a mismatch, I think, between the industry's perception of Terry and how Terry's actually worked in the past. And I know that used to drive Terry crazy. He kept saying if somebody mentioned Baron Munchausen again, he wouldn't be answerable for his actions because he felt that was a film that happened, I think, 10 years before. And people just thought about that and didn't think about the actual work that he'd done in the film since then. He's a responsible filmmaker. He understands the responsibility of filmmaking. And, uh, I mean, he's, he's, I think, enjoyed the... Uh, um, sometimes fencing under the cloak of enfant terrible, but he's, he's a responsible enfant, if there is such a thing. It's reaching that point now. I mean, the actors are going to have to start turning up soon. We've only got, what, what have we got now, seven weeks? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's got a lot of potential for chaos here. Is that what we like? <laughs> Due to the production's tight budget, many of the actors are taking less than their usual fees and squeezing the film into their already busy schedules. The situation has made it more difficult for Gilliam to assemble the principal actors for script readings and rehearsals. Well, I mean, I, I still try to reach Johnny directly. Uh, 
But I think we just plan to go over there and we wait them out. A flight from London for Tony, a flight from Paris for Jean, and we'll surround him. Yeah, well, just, but the thing is, find out all the possibilities and then, uh, and we'll just, we have to march forward. But I still want to try to reach him. So when, when do you see Vanessa again? Only here. Uh, Vanessa, maybe. Uh, yeah, how about because, yeah. Tell me maybe four, five, uh, six. No, the seventh. Probably yeah. Johnny, yeah. Uh, come Johnny, seventh, come yeah. here. Well, this is what they trying no. to organize. It would be better to see Johnny, I mean, you know, just also from one day. I know. Or two days, yeah. just so. Everything is separated. Costumes are in Rome, you know. Yeah. Cast is in England or in France yeah. or in Prague. Uh, special effects, everything is everywhere. Yeah. And it, until we all get together, that's when it's going to get the hard work. Yeah. What we have to uh, achieve on this is putting all these people that have been working in separate places together. The sets have been done in Spain, makeup is working from, from England, uh, actors are here, there, but they haven't been together at all. I mean, it's just, we gotta put everybody together. Everything has to be centralized in Madrid. No, but it's it's uh, one more reason to have mess, to have one person in London. But all the pickups are not in the same place. So the driver, we don't, we don't know where the driver is coming from because we're using this company with, with an actor. I mean, I, we know that suddenly that actor is, we don't know. <laughs> or we have to deliver a script change that, I mean, I don't know, so many no, things no. that can happen. But, yeah, so many for me things. it was maybe somewhat of my control. Anymore. Camera left, yeah, mass, 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 yeah. mass, 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 Okay. 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 And bring this foot to here. And then that's good. Like Raul, look into the camera. You can lean over. Ah, see, see, see. No, it's perfect. And action! Really violent. Really violent. But rapido and cool. I see. Film has turned. Film has finally turned on this film. There's the that's the trailer for the film right there. Exactly. Coming soon. <laughs> sería que el, que el cabello, mal, empuja, ¿eh? el le cabello lleva estuviera un poquito más, de, un poquito, o sea, él estuviera quieto, el caballo un par de pasos para atrás. Lo ideal es que no te quedes quieto y el caballo vaya hacia atrás. Calma, la idea es buena, pues, pues pero que el caballo estuviera a esta distancia. Más lejos. Sí. Pero esas son cosas que se deben de ensayar un poco con, con los actores realmente aquí. So do I, we're on the same page there. My goal by September 25th is to try and find some actor that will come to Spain and do pre-production because I'm a great believer in rehearsal and being prepared before you shoot. My problem still isn't with the training because I'm not good, none of these guys know horses. My problem is the fucking organization because it's a fucking nightmare. Traditionally, on film productions, it's the responsibility of the first assistant director to set a schedule which complements the film's budget. In this particular case, Phil Patterson has inherited a budget and schedule which leave no margin for error, no safety net. Every film is different. It's very hard to compare a Terry Gilliam film to anybody else's films. It's very hard to say what's right or wrong, but this film is in... Um, 
I'd like to say, complete disarray. Absolute and faffing total disarray. But it is absolutely the correct way it should be, given that it's Terry, given that it's a Gilliam film, because Captain Chaos um, is completely in his element at the moment. Now, you walk this way, come to me, lead on. Down this way. Now turn a bit, turn a bit, yeah, a little bit. It isn't a disaster. It just has a lot of elements that seem to be a little different. Rosinante. No, you can't eat. You're not allowed to eat. Look at those ribs. I thought we were going to need makeup. Look, the, the pelvic bones are fantastic. Look at them. We have a horse. I am here. You are here. We are all here. <laughs> Jean Rochefort is the first of the principal actors to be able to schedule a short trip to Madrid for the necessary costume and makeup tests. This is the ride for the uh, theme park. Rochefort has been learning English for the last seven months in order to play the part of Don Quixote. This is Toby Guzzini, is uh, the Duchess. Little, little, we c it comes together. The Spanish actors. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The majority are Spanish now. Yes, yes. Yeah. They don't speak English. No. Nobody speaks English like in this film. No. Yeah. <laughs> Jean Rochefort is just so beyond perfect. The spirit of the man is obviously right, and his comic timing is perfect. His, you know, his, his, his dignity, his, his, uh, all of those things are all there. What I'd like to try is an experiment to make your nose a little bit more Spanish something very small. Because Jean is a great nose, but it's, I mean, I look at these Spanish noses, and Jean is really big as... And it's, it's whether it just has a tiny bit more to make it a little bit more Spanish. It's something, if you think about it, yes. it's bad. Yes, thank you, because yeah. I, perhaps if, if I have this, I, 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 I feel that I play Don Quixote. Oh, really? I want to be Don Quixote. I understand. I want to sing I am Don Quixote. Do you understand yeah. my English? Totally, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a marvelous day. <laughs> Not only is he perfect for the part, he's a great horseman. That was always my biggest problem, finding a guy old enough, 70 years old, who looks right, can act well, and can ride a horse. So the question is, what, no, the three of us, I mean, where... Now, I just want to know, I want to get down so I understand everything with Vanessa. Where are we with Vanessa at the moment? Vanessa is now in... So where are we contractually? The, the contract is not signed. The agent says no. Each time we are asking something, availability for your meeting, availability for the test, the agent says no, she's not available. We need Vanessa on the 11th, no, she's not available. So we are more or less uh, a little bit uh, trapped if we have weather condition problems. We have to have her agreement to change any dates. That's so, crazy. We have very set pieces for the second string actors, Miranda, Bill Patterson, mm -hmm. uh, Peter Vaughan, etc. The only thing we have in our favour is the notion of some flexibility to move around the rest of the work we're doing by having Vanessa on a picture deal, Johnny Depp on a picture deal, and having Jean Ross Ford on a picture mm. deal. If, if we take Vanessa as a, it can only be this, 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 and we have, we're, we're in no, deep no, shit. I, 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 yeah. It's not possible. We did the deal. I don't understand how it slides. Because, and this is what kind of makes me crazy, the fact that contracts are allowed to run this long. To be this close to shooting and not have a contract is crazy. We are so fragile. This no, thing is so yes. hanging in, on strings. And if we don't have any flexibility with her, we're dead. <laughs> Coyote struck me more powerfully when I reached middle age, because that's what I thought Coyote was very much about. He's an older man. He's been through life. It's kind of like a last hurrah. He has one last chance to uh, make the world as interesting as he dreams it to be. Yeah, and, and I'll be 61 in another couple of months. He's an old man, and I've only done X number of films. I should have done more with 
the amount of ideas that are floating in my head. All of the film's interior scenes must be shot on a soundstage. Gilliam's producers have been able to secure the last available soundstage in Madrid, and it's important for Gilliam and his team to inspect the site before set construction can begin. So we're supposed to put all our sets in this, in here. The acoustics are pulling. See? Yeah. We've got air conditioning. Is that air conditioning, do you think? Yeah, see. Or just stuff to make noise for, so you get bad sound. The sound is terrible here. Yeah, I mean, we are enclosed and it's still echoes. Like yeah. I'm, I'm, I mean, that was the first thing we said before when we got here. So this is this warehouse. So I don't know what we, how we do this because these sets have got to be not that. <laughs> there's no other studio. I mean, properly done, proper, proper with everything. No, uh, I, mean, so, I mean, sound is. I mean, it's critical. I mean, yeah. I mean, I thought we were coming to a studio. You know, a studio. Yeah. And this isn't a studio. Yeah. It's not in. I don't want to be doing a film like this. I'm really getting a bit very, getting very nervous. have always been plagued by bad things. It's kind of like the Scottish play, I think. It's, it's a jinxed project. The biggest threat of this whole thing is that I fear it could be Munchausen too. There are so many echoes of Munchausen that just keep happening. And that's, that's what scares me. Luckily, those who weren't on Munchausen aren't scared. And actually, interesting, Jose Luis, who was on Munchausen, isn't scared. That we are on the edge, yes, we are on the edge, that's for sure. We are not well covered, that's for sure. Uh, but I don't think that that means that uh, we're repeating Munchausen. Everyone knew on Munchausen from the beginning, from the beginning that nothing was realistic. So, no, I don't think we are in the same, we're doing the, 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 the same things are happening at all now. <laughs> and we fill that in, so it's, it's all that, yeah. But well, you can't go wrong. You said, I mean, it goes in there, another arm will start inflating. Oh, that arm's caught. No. <laughs> Thanks. Adios. Hey, giant test. Hey, it's okay. Sino sabía. He was asking if you knew who we, he was gonna. He's just telling you he's gonna take Johnny Depp. Sí. But he, él lo sabía. En el mano. Carnival. Sí. Sí, sí, exactamente. Carnival. John Rochefort was getting up playing yesterday, so I get a call yesterday afternoon from Rennie Kleitman saying, guess what? Jean, as he was about to board the plane, started feeling pain and decided he might have a prostate problem and canceled 
the flight, didn't get on the flight, and is now seeing a doctor this morning. If he hesitates about yeah. getting on the plane, I'll call well, him. As soon as he, yeah. say, he sees a doctor, yeah. I, I will tell yeah. you, yeah. you have to say, I yeah. need you. We've got to at least get a few hours with him today, or we're in big trouble. With him, so. But he, uh, it's, it's, but it, what's interesting is how powerful his mind is. It's destroying his body right yeah. now. It's a, it's a metamorphosis. Yep. He's, he suffers, like Don Quixote. Yeah, they're kill him. <laughs> it's ridiculous. The, I mean, Jean has become totally psychosomatic. Everything is like... Oh, yeah. And by oh. him, is more... I mean, we knew oh. that. Huh? Yeah. Oh, there is a contract. There is a day you need to stay. Oh. See, on, on Munchausen, we didn't have costumes or sets at the beginning. And now this one, we don't have actors. We've got costumes and sets, but no actors. But Jean Rochefort panicked on, yeah. on Sunday. I am uh, sure that you have a panic. Me, I have a lot of panic about it. Uh, I'm very cold. Uh, uh, everybody Fatalism. have a, our Fatalism. panic. Fatalism. Ah. Nothing like a false sense of security. There's none of that around here, is there? <laughs> I don't think there's any sense of security, false or real. <laughs> How would you describe the state of things? Sheer panic. <laughs> like total panic, you know, chickens with no heads running around. I mean, it is real panic now. It's one week before production. What's worrying you the most? Pre-production. Tell the truth. The first location that we shoot in is uh, adjacent to a NATO bombing range that I was told only operated a maximum of one hour per day. We don't really have uh, any horses. Uh, we don't really have any actors. Uh, have a phone. Hello? How are you? I've got an actor. I have an actor. He's sitting here. Yeah, last time I know. He, did, he didn't have an actor last time. Now we got an actor. <laughs> You're the new boy in town. This is called our film. What's the name of it? <sighs> it's uh, not Chocolat. It's a... Uh, oh. Did I finish that one? This is the inn, but there's going to be a herd of sheep in the inn. So, you know, it just the lonely yeah. people. This is Antonio Gil. You know him. He was on Chocolat. Yeah, he was on Chocolat. Yeah. He's a good guy. And that's Bob Hoskins and uh, Danny DeVito. Ian, uh, and Ian Holmes, Holmes. All put together. Bastard Child. And he's a dwarf. Oh, good. And he sings opera. That makes sense. <laughs> You spin around, and Quixote is already charging you. It's not that he's standing there saying, stand aside, he's in full charge right at you. I don't know what else Toby should be doing and all that, except... The only thing I, I was thinking is, that, is would, would Toby's initial thing be like, maybe he's on the set of the commercial? What I was thinking is maybe, maybe the first thing he would do is, is, is want Bob to, to yell cut. <laughs> <laughs> Bob! Cut, cut Bob! Bob. No, that's great. That's really, no, that's great. Just to, just to yeah. sort of bring it back to that. Yeah, no, that's really good. You know, you know there's, there's got to be an explanation for it. And obviously, here's Don Quixote, and there's the windmills and all that shit. Cut this. Yeah. And then it's clear that it's, and it's got, that's, no, it's great. It's really nice. While Gilliam and Depp discuss the script, Vanessa Paradis arrives for screen tests of her many costume and makeup changes. The production, however, is still missing its Don Quixote. But have you heard any more about it from him? Really? Yes, because I, it sounds I, okay. my assistant, Corinne, yeah. went with him at the airport, yes, to be sure this okay, time. Good, 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 yeah. <laughs> and he was in very good shape. But it's not, is it really I a prostate, is it really a prostate infection? Infection, yes. So it's nothing more than a, a small infection. Right. He can sit on, the problem is, can yeah, he sit on a horse? Yeah. Okay. It was panic, it was, it was always panic. Panic, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. I like the uneven, the more irregular. 
he, he made it. Oh, Don yeah. Quixote made the armor. There was one piece here, one piece there, one there. Oh. Sewing and ah, a knight. Even if you take, just for the moment, just to look, that piece on there, it's suddenly, immediately, boom, it's good. Yeah, we need meno elegance. Avevo yeah. meno elegante, Carlo. So he's just got a piece tied on there. That is elegant, yeah. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Is it the same shape? Right. I mean, he's got to be sad, pathetic, and he's wonderful, because it's all in his mind. We'll design this for you, Gabriella. You'll get another, another Oscar, another Oscar for this. It's skidding there. I think Don Quixote slowly becomes real. Yeah. Guides our fortunes more favorably than we could have wished ourselves. Look, Sancho, my friend. <laughs> Beautiful princess. She's in grave danger. We must save her. Those giants are almost upon her. Don't you see them? Giants, giants with arms six miles long. That's amazing. Don't say that. Don't does not exist. Oh, no. I understand. You have a plan. Sancho. You are very clever for the peasant. Uh, <laughs> fantastic. It's going to be an extraordinary film. Yes, yes, yes. I think that your face is so wondrous. God, is it? Words, all this stuff, and with the costumes and the sets and the location. I mean, it's going to be, I don't know, it's going to be an extraordinary film. It's going to be beautiful and terrible. The shoot begins in Las Barnas, a nature preserve four hours north of Madrid. Due to the distance, all the cast and crew must be lodged nearby. The extra expense makes it all the more critical that the production remains on schedule. The first scene to be shot is one in which Quixote rescues Toby from an Inquisition chain gang. DOS, DOS, director on set. Let's clear, please. Everybody behind there. Okay. Esconderos todos, everybody okay. hidden behind, please. Look it up everywhere, shooting now. You good, Carlos? All right, here we go. Roll camera. And action, Richard. The action crane. Good. Cut it! Excellent. Excellent. With the first shot of the day in the can, the crew prepares for a choreographed portion of the scene. Go, 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 go. 
In this part of the scene, one of the guards drops the key to the chain, and the 12 prisoners must scramble to retrieve it. Because he's the only one with a free hand. Everybody else has got two hands. The guy in the front has got a free hand because there's nobody in front of him. He... So it's a domino thing. Okay, now, while that's going on, okay, what's happening here? We've got the key somewhere. Where, who's got the key? Have we managed to get the uh, key to the lock? I found... No day for time. Badly. Good. Come on, I'm going to see what happened to you guys. Nobody's getting up? Hey, I don't like to start. Wakey, wakey, folks. People have to start getting up. This is, fuck, come on. This is, I thought this was rehearsed. This is not rehearsed. Fuck. Yep. We didn't have the extras, so we need to sell the extra. what we do. You but see what I mean? On Saturday, we didn't no. have the extras to rehearse? No, we didn't have the extra on the rehearsal. That's Since why. when? What was the point of having a rehearsal without them? You don't get the, re the, the extra. You need extras to do the rehearsal. If you don't get them, you better tell us so we know in advance we're, that we're well, fucked. We are fucked. And we don't didn't know it. I want to know when we're fucked in advance, not, while, not in the middle of a, a shoot. Come on, sir. Oh, oh, Right. To try to get the most out of the day, Gilliam and Phil Patterson decide to move on to another part of the scene. Here's Joel rush for another double. Walking in. Walking in and basically doing the dialogue. See. Doing the scene, yeah. See. Yes. You yeah, do, I mean, this is a wide shot, so we just do, we go through all the action and then we will... Plan d'ensemble pour voir tout ce qui Yes, and the master. Yeah, but this is a master, so yeah. whatever we can get is good. Look it up everywhere, shooting now. Background action! And action, John. <laughs> cut, cut, cut. What's going on? We're fucked. We have now spent all this time and we got the fighters, but we'll do the scene anyway. I don't give a fuck about sound. We'll use the close up sound. We shoot through everything. And we need people who can work horses. And I feel nobody can work horses here. Action, John! Tell me, sir, why do you leave these poor wretches in chains? They are convicted criminals, condemned to serve the king in his galleys. I am Don Quixote de la Mancha, dedicated to chivalry and the protection of the weak. Oh, no one make any sudden moves. I have nothing to fear from you, provided your intentions are honorable. Thank God for that. <laughs> Cut! Good, good, good bits in there. The F-16 gets the award. Well done for putting up with the boys. That was good. There was lots of good. I want to do one more, and I think we have this. Stand by, let's just check this out in position. Put your name down. Here we go. Stand by. Two, one. Ow! Fucker, that hurts. Why am I being punched? This god off that thing. Real? It's just a dream. Doesn't hurt. Doesn't hurt. Oh, Ow! Jesus Christ! Don't class Three, two, five. Cut. Let's go to lunch. Yeah. A very strange weather today. Oh. This morning strange weather, strange rain. horses. It's just going flat. Something coming in. It's very hard to understand where, where the boundaries are. So what we're going to do is we start with you and Rosinante. Yes. Two sizes, one like this and one like that. Yes. So, Joel, you'll just be off camera, so we won't have to worry about the okay. other horse. Yes. 
got the same weather report at lunchtime that I got yesterday and the day before. No, it's always the same as each day. Well, that's good. There's a certain consistency. Consistent. We know what we're doing here. It's no sound. If it isn't the F-16s, it's thunder. Do you like Phil? In another half hour, it'll be clear once this cloud comes over. Slug it up everywhere, shooting now. You good, Carlos? All right, here we go. Rehearsal. You have nothing to fear from me, provided your intentions are honorable. Thank God for that. We wouldn't stand a chance, would we, boys? <laughs> It does not seem right that honorable men like yourselves should be the executioners of your fellow men when they are not wrong. It's a sad, sad world. According to the duty of my profession, I have no choice but to take this man under my protection. Yield to heaven's command. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, just listen up for a second. I suspect there's a uh, large uh, bunch of lightning and a storm about to hit us. What I'd like everybody to do right now is to make all the gear completely safe, cover up. We're going to wait for this lightning to pass, see what the weather on the other side of the front is, whether or not we can reconstitute. But at the moment, what I need everybody to do is to make safe and get undercover. Which is it, King Lear or Wizard of Oz? I mean, I don't know what we've got out of this, I mean, how much time we get insurance-wise. <laughs> we've got to clear. I mean, all that gear is going to take a day. No, no idea. Clean up everything, and this has to dry up. Yeah. I mean, do, are we covered on insurance for things like that? Is it yeah. 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 So no, look, we have to come here in the morning, see, uh, oye, Javier, mañana no va a haber, see what no, we can no, do. No. This could be dry. It may no, not. The weather might be shitty, but we uh, can't. That's going to be a mud hole. It's not going to dry up with that. No. <laughs> it's no. Uh, interesting situation. Um, almost checkmate, but not quite. Uh, we'll wriggle out of this somehow. A call to the insurance company has revealed that although the production is covered for any damaged equipment, they won't necessarily be covered for the shooting time lost due to acts of God. 
In an attempt to salvage something from the day, the producers have suggested that they try to resume shooting parts of the chain gang scene. If we go ahead and try and shoot today, we won't get that done. We'll shoot half a day today, we'll shoot half a day tomorrow, and we'll probably not get Friday. Now, the, the correct way, the correct way to ensure that you continue on in a fully, in the most operational way you can, is to take this day to put the unit back together. No. But don't you think it would not have been possible to go with a small unit? No. no. That's my answer. Yeah. No. And you can say that, that you talked to me, and I said no. I agree that most of the crew will have to, uh, to, to reconstruct everything. But why didn't you with 10 people to shoot inside the taxi is not you know, no, we need yeah, 10 people or 15 people. It doesn't work like that. This film unit is not able to function today in any capacity except for maintenance and putting ourselves back together. Although the sets have finally dried out, the heavy rains have entirely changed the color of the desert. The landscape that Gilliam chose for its starkness is now tinged with brown and green and won't match what's already been shot. To make matters worse, the first part of the chain gang scene was shot in bright sunlight, and now there's no sun at all. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Well, it's point was that it's a waste of time, really, to be honest, because we don't have the light, and I don't know if we ever will. Do you think it would be possible just to anticipate to, to go to come back to the base camp? And if the, 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 the weather uh, mm. is keeping like that, to retry to reshoot the, the, the sequence 30? No, I know, that, yeah. I, I, I know that you know, the, the sequence is written like yeah, with yeah. big sunny weather, but I, I don't think we have other options. If we want to do something, and yeah, we yeah, have no, to do I something, know, we will have I know, I know, I know. Nicola. Here's a thought. Taxi's bullshit. We don't want to do yeah. a taxi. But we could do Johnny tighter shots and light him, even in his light. For, for, for which situation? Continuing the scene back there. The crew decides to move camp in order to shoot a different scene which doesn't require bright sunlight. The move will take several hours out of the day. Shooting dialogue while that's going on. No, we can. Yeah. Oh, well, we'll just. But the timing. No, 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 no. I mean, there are no. no uh, there's going to be something else soon. There'll be something else. I don't know what it is, but this is. I mean, sit there, ready to go. These guys arrive. And then we just stir in a little bit of Munchaus. <laughs> Why don't we, we try to, to well, shoot this, this uh, the first? No, we were setting up for that shot. Yes? We, we, there's a plan, there's a very clear plan what we're doing, and, it, you know, and we're the victims of that. And if we keep running for each thing, we, all we do is run in circles. I mean, this is, I don't know what else to do. I mean, all of us have done a lot of stuff, and none of us know the answer right now. I mean, you're sitting, everybody is just like,
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're a minute away. Let's do final checks. Yes, he says! Be steady, Sancho. Trust me. It may happen that before we pass six days together, I shall conquer a number of kingdoms. Fuck you, we had a deal. And your loyalty shall be rewarded. Uh, cut! We're fucked. This did you see crazy. him sit? Did you see him sit on the horse? It's fucking crazy. The pain when he, he can't sat down. Act. Yep. He can't do it. It's just yeah. it ain't gonna happen. And I was watching his face very carefully when he got on that horse. And it was just oh, fuck. He can't ride like that. He can't, certainly can't act like that. And he certainly can't jiggle hand props with that. You know. I'm honestly I wanna go to the French and say I'm going to refuse to shoot with Jean Rushford on a horse until he's medically fit. The producers wanted to put him on the horse, Terry wanted to put him on the horse, Rushford himself came out of the trailer and they put it to him and he wanted to get on the horse. And I just said, overruled Phil and said, OK, he's got to do it. He's got to put something on film. The man has been working seven months and he hasn't had a chance to do anything. Let's do it. Just look it up everywhere, shooting now. Action! It may happen that before we pass six days together, I shall conquer a number of kingdoms. I will crown you king of one of them. King. OK, cut. That was nice. That was... One more? OK. Here's one more. OK. When it was time for him to get off, it took two men to carry him off the horse, put him in a chair. It took him 40 minutes from there to be able to walk to his car. All right, we're checking the gate, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Um, I know it hasn't been the best week for everybody. I know it's been really, really difficult, and I know we've had a lot of calamity, but I'd like you all to thank you all very much for hanging in doing your bit and uh, all I can tell you that is uh, I'll endeavour to make it better next week and uh, I hope you'll all join me at Monastero de Piedra and we'll start making the film. <laughs> Thank you very much one and all, that's a wrap, let's uh, pack it up. Do we get snow next week? <laughs> <laughs> and because the, the, the greater problem wasn't just within the, the unit. It was never, just... never, never. In 22 years I've been in this business, I've never seen such a sum of sfiga, we say in Italian, yeah, yeah, bad luck. Right. I mean, sfiga is actually a better word than bad luck, because sfiga is the negation of the pussy, that is like, figa. whatever, la figa is the pussy, la sfiga is, is the negation of it. So we, everything that can go wrong goes wrong. I mean, everything, everything, mm. everything, everything. Yeah, I mean, if you write a script and you think of the worst possible situation, you, you can't make it up. I mean, it's... I don't know. I think storyboards is the only way to put my brain together. The producers are looking for a solution to the film's problems, and it's often the case on film productions that the first solution is to replace the assistant director. In this case, Gilliam's right-hand man, Phil Patterson. I think that actually, as if, if you fire him, he would be very happy the first reaction. Then he probably would, be, because he, he. I mean, that's, I mean it's, it's basically he's taking all the responsibility on yeah. his shoulders, and and I mean he's feeling it's just a complete failure and it's his fault. And that's ridiculous. I yes. Mean, yeah. mm -hmm. And that's that's where that's coming from. And so in <coughs> that kind of sense of responsibility and dedication is just really rare. Did you think that the good the good thing to do is mm -hmm. to, to keep. You know, Phil goes and I might as well go too. Because Phil has been the, one of the few people holding this thing together. His strength is that he just won't let go. He will keep going. Mm. And if he can you know, regain just some sense of being able to control the, you know, the mess. I don't know.
Later that day, Jean Rochefort flies back to Paris to see his doctor. Although Rochefort will be returning in a few days, his departure leaves the production in a quandary about what to do with the next week's shoot. I stated my opinion quite strongly that we should pack up and we should take the unit back to uh, Madrid and uh, reconstitute ourselves and make a decision about where we were going. Any form of shooting was uh, wasteful. There's a lot of argument to say, cut and run now, stop. But I would rather keep shooting because at least we're putting stuff on film. And we got people who just gave us $16 million coming down, 60 of them. Yeah, we got to shoot on Monday. We, we have to shoot no matter what. Welcome to Spain, to the set, to the movie. <laughs> With Rochefort's schedule to return in two days, Gilliam and the producers have decided to forge ahead and shoot the scenes that don't require him. They're especially concerned that the location will be unusable in a few weeks when the leaves begin to fall from the trees. They also have their principal investors visiting the set. You fiddle with the fish, leave his brain out, and the horse comes up and nudges you over that way. So, is that me? Where? I hope so. Or the horse. <laughs> it might be the horse. He's very good. He's a professional. Look it up, everywhere. Shoot him now. We've loaded the fish. The fish is loaded. All right, here we go. Roll camera. Action. Horse, come on. Come on, horse. Come on, horsey. You wanna fuck with me? Ah, fucker! And cut it, cut it. Cut. Let's do it again, straight away. Fast. Action! Horse, come on, horse. We're moving in. Is the horse about to move? Okay. Good, 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 good. Good idea, good. Cut, 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 cut. Turn the camera on this. Turn the camera around. Johnny looks in. Let's just dig it on with it. Johnny's gonna, we go into a close-up. We don't have to be anywhere. There, Johnny can do it from here. Leave the camera there. He turns in the camera and walks out. Okay. We'll get some shots. This is fucking stupid. Jesus. As Gilliam troubleshoots the scene, news arrives from Paris that it will be at least a week before Jean Rochefort is well enough to return. You know what they're gonna ask us to do? They're gonna ask us not to put him on a horse when he gets back. Well, then we gotta cancel the film. You know that? I mean, there is no... No, they're gonna say, let's start him off Without, you know, you know they're going to ask you that, don't you? I made a statement last Friday at lunch. Yeah, I know, I know. And I, know. I stick I by that statement. I and I'll stick by it when he comes back this time, too. Well, you're not going to put him on the horse? <laughs> well, then how, what are we doing here, then? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. It might be, it's a funnier look from there, because it, yeah. But that was, that was really good, that one. Right? Everything is sort of quick. Look it up everywhere, shooting now. Ah. You wanna fuck with me? Huh? Fucker! What were you thinking? <laughs> and cut it! Cut it! Uh, Just cut it out! Camera rat. Are you supposed to be in front? <laughs> I'm the football. <laughs> I'm the football big. <laughs> The team. Excellent. <laughs> so I'll be, I'll be down here. <laughs> OK, we'll give you one, two, three at three. You'll be shooting, all right? Hi. Thank you. Thank you. As the investors leave the set, the insurance adjusters arrive. They've come to investigate last week's claims and to decide how to proceed in Rochefort's absence. Yeah. Yeah. Just so you know, um, we're not going to shoot tomorrow. OK, so, we, um, so we're going to travel back to Madrid. Mañana no rodamos. No. Now, just check in with production before you go. 8 o'clock, we meet at the base camp, have breakfast together, 
and decide what to do. All right. Meet in at 8 o'clock at the base camp, have breakfast together. We'll see. We're not shooting, but we'll see. We don't know the state of Jean Rochefort's health. We don't know whether he's going to come back whole or come back or what. I don't know. I mean, he's being tested, prodded, probed, poked. And I suppose we'll know in a couple more days what his state is. In the book, Cervantes does something very strange and very cruel. At every turn, Cervantes mocks Quixote. At every turn, Cervantes goes out of his way to show how foolish the old man is. And the crueler he is, the more we love Quixote. So that when this man becomes sane at the end, as a, as a reader, we can't stand this. We don't want him to be sane. We want him to remain mad because we know full well that when he's sane, he will die. I'm only waiting to hear what, what that is. Is there a test he wants to do, or does he just say, Jean, you need to rest? You know, I mean, so we're just waiting to hear. We're literally just waiting to hear. On film productions, a completion guarantor assumes financial responsibility for ensuring that a film will be completed and delivered on schedule. Fred Milstein has come to Madrid to protect his assets and to help the production team cope with the recent setbacks. I think there is no worse situation than not knowing anything. So everybody is keeping asking every day, what do we have to do? When are we going to restart? And nobody is able to give an answer. We don't know. We don't know. No, that's all the news we have. No rodamos lunes y martes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay, the castle. No, we moved that to from Wednesday. Fantastic. Brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. They're wonderful. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I keep working. I keep marching ahead. It's the one thing I've always been pretty good at is just to keep, keep marching ahead and, and doing it and saying, yeah, we can do it, let's keep going, let's keep going. We're not shooting Monday, Tuesday, so you can have a holiday till then. Bueno, hoy, eso, eso hoy a la 1 y 10. Noticias hoy 1 y 10. Una y cuarto ya veremos. The production team has been working to arrange a new schedule based on Rushforth's return but the news comes in from Rashford's doctors that he will not be returning for at least 10 more days. And while the production continues to spend money to keep the crew working, the insurance company seems to be claiming that Rashford's illness may be a force majeure event, an act of God not covered by the policy. His opinion is more that if there's an insured event, it's not force majeure. It's what? It needs to be defined. It needs to be defined. Uh, but it's clearly, it's for acts of God, and he doesn't think that the illness of another actor is a force majeure event. The force majeure, it's necessary to have a definition of the force majeure uh, for the force majeure to be applicable. And he was looking at the, at the, at the contract and said there is no definition, no real definition of the force majeure in that case, and it's for him, I don't know, it's not applicable at all. My feeling, or my, my wish, more than my feeling, is that we should at least stop for a few weeks or months and reorganize everything, because uh, of course all the locations now are is a big mass, cast is a big mass, crew is a big mass, so the best thing for everybody and uh, for the film would be to be able to stop, but I know that financially that's a lot of money. The insurance company was saying, uh, hold on, you have to be very careful, so keep everybody uh, on track, but in the other hand, don't spend money. Uh, the question is, is whether they would reinsure Jean. That's the problem. And then the pressure will be to recast. And that's what I don't want to do. And I don't even know who can do the job. Because, I mean, we've spent a long time coming to uh, Jean Rochefort, and then he spent a year and a half thinking about it, seven months learning English, and he's magnificent. 
Another problem with recasting the film is that Gilliam, Depp, and Rochefort are what are contractually known as essential elements. If any one of them leaves the project, the film must be entirely refinanced. Il y a un an et demi, Jean Rochefort m'a appelé pour me dire euh, c'est le plus grand jour de ma vie. Terry Gilliam m'a appelé pour me confier le rôle de Don Quichotte. Le même homme par qui ce film est arrivé, Jean Rochefort, aujourd'hui n'est pas avec nous. Et voilà quelque chose qui nous rappelle la fragilité des entreprises humaines et en particulier cinématographiques. Les nouvelles de Jean Rochefort que j'ai tous les jours, euh, euh, avec qui je parle personnellement, évidemment je parle aussi avec le, le médecin de l'assurance en France, ne nous permettent pas aujourd'hui de prévoir son retour avec certitude à une date précise. Donc nous avons décidé de mettre en œuvre euh, la suite du film en tenant compte de l'hypothèse optimiste du retour de Jean avec nous le 16 octobre. So the idea is to reschedule the film as soon as possible, check with everybody, actors, um, other departments and locations about the availability of this new schedule based on starting on the 16th. What's happening if Jean is not coming back on There is many possibilities. Pregunta que qué pasa si Jean no vuelve. The film is going to be there. Doesn't matter how the film is going to be there. No importa cómo, pero la película se va a hacer. No sabemos qué va a pasar si John no vuelve el 16. No lo sabemos, no podemos contestar a eso. Hay muchas cosas en Merci beaucoup et à tout de suite. This is no way to make a film, even if even a small film. This no, is just crap. I mean, to make one like this is you know, it's impossible. And in fact, there's nothing pushing us right now. There's no motor anymore in this. We're just sort of waiting for the insurance to tell us what to do. Nobody seems to be in control of anything. No. I like shooting things, even if it's completely fucked up and totally useless. At least there's some images, something to pay, you know, to, to justify several years of work. <laughs> so much denial going on, you know, the fact that 27th of November, Jean Rochefort is going to be back and dancing and jumping on the horse. Forget about it. I mean, accept the idea these men won't be fit to make the movie. Yeah, the, the problem is that, that uh, uh, Jean Rochefort is, is ill, was ill, uh, has seen a number of doctors, has been on some treatment, but he's still not well, and he's certainly not well enough to, not to shoot, and uh, we were told today that not to expect him next week. No, but see, the problem is, you know, we had force majeure last weekend, and uh, we should have used that in order to straighten the house. And when I say to Bernard, like I did today, Bernard, tell me now, tell me straight to my face, that if Rushford comes back and we have him on the set and I turn to you as the first AD on the set and say, this man is incapable of working, are you going to sell me down the tube again? Are you going to vote against my decision? And I'm trying to remain... No, you know. Succeeding quickly as well. <laughs> Somewhat <laughs> rational about it. You know? Somewhat is it good and enough? <laughs> no, but here we're sitting. What, what's making me crazy? Okay, we've stopped shooting and now we're reorganizing ourselves. Well, are we reorganizing ourselves? No. No. That's what pisses me off. This is the whole point of the time is to go through and get ourselves in fighting fit shape to actually do the film. No, no, and, we're and nothing doing, is happening. We're going where nothing just is happening. We're running we're just, around in circles and we're getting in. in and the days are just floating past. Shape than we were when we stopped it. I don't know how they, I mean I don't know how one gets out. I mean not being having been in this stuff before, I plowed on and I don't have any energy to plow on at the moment. This isn't a plowable um yeah, I know, I know that. So I don't know how one, how a plug gets pulled out of a thing like this. Yeah, look, I'm going to go back to uh, El Hete and I'm going to tell the French producers that uh, I'm uh, not going to continue in the project the way it is. 
um, and, and explain to them the reason that I'm leaving the film is that I don't have confidence in the producers to support me in the decisions that need to be made in terms of making the film. Mm. We can't make the film. Not the film you want to make. And yeah, you know, I'm sorry to be, as always, the bearer of fucking bad tidings and whatever, but. Yeah. Right. I don't know anymore. I've lost it completely. I can't imagine film anymore. That's my problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. And everybody's limping off to other jobs even already. Have you heard any more since the fact that doctors were just doing more tests today? Yeah, for the insurers all going to Paris tomorrow. It's almost like I've forgotten about this film. It's like it doesn't exist. It can't exist, because if it does exist, it's too painful. And I'll just hang around here and, and shout. Yeah, OK. All right, thanks. Bye. Well, the insurers are all meeting in Paris tomorrow. Reddy's going up there to decide what to do. But there's been a little complication with Fred Milstein, the completion bond guy, who's been down here the last few days trying to uh, sort things out. He was saying something to Jose about the fact that the paperwork isn't quite correct between him and the insurance company. And it could mean that he's going to get stuck with the bill which would be disastrous for him because he's not protected in the way the insurance companies are. And Jose was saying, you know, of course he'll fight it and maybe he'll probably end up in court with them fighting over who picks up the pieces or picks up the, the pieces of paper that need paying. It's like, you know, there is this cursed Quixote going on in all this. Interesting. Listen to that wind. We started with the deluge, and now the great wind is sweeping it clean, blowing Quixote away out of Spain forever. It's howling out there, it's over. By the end of October, it's clear that Rochefort will not return. He's been diagnosed with a double herniated disc and he requires at least another month of recovery. What is the state of the film now? Abandon. Il n'y a pas aujourd'hui de perspective concrète pour le reprendre. Ça viendra peut-être un jour. Mais pour répondre complètement à votre question, aujourd'hui, les droits du film appartiennent à la compagnie d'assurance. Often when you have uh, problems in prep, um, when you have a shaky film production, the usual catch cry in film is, let's start shooting and straighten it out, and always in the belief that to begin filming will help you get on track and send you down one path. The old train theory. Um, didn't work this time. John Rochefort was the sort of tragic end to a, a series of problems that beset the film. Quite early on. Maybe the only real responsibility of Terry is about all this mess. That is, in order to make it happen, I believe he lowered too much his targets. And he gave an impression of being about to do a more simple movie than it is. Because again, it's been going on for so long for him. 
I mean, that's what we don't consider. For him, this is not the first die. You know, Terry's very good at being proud of how impossible something might be, but no director's going to start a picture thinking we may not ever get through this. It was very painful to see it all coming horribly true. Like I say, it was the most painful thing was seeing reality win over Don Quixote in the end, because it did. I, mean, I honestly don't know what I'd like to see happen. I suppose on one hand, I'd like Jean to get better and us to be able to make the film. And that would be, on the other hand, I don't know. I mean, I just like, I've done the film too often in my head, too many times, I've seen it, I've been through it, I know how it goes. Uh, is it better you know, to just leave it there? I really don't know. Thank you. 